so yellow to the right to the right of the sea star yep yeah so a lot of the bare skeleton will be colonized by hydrozoans hmm. Hmm. you can see that the tissue sort of receding from the base Closed up polyps on a lot of it. But yeah, this, this little star is, is quite small. They do get quite a bit bigger than this. Really interesting brambly uh, branches, yeah, coming off yeah. of the base there. Mm. Yeah. Do you think that's a different species or is it the same? You know, we see these kind of branches come off once in a while, and typically they're near wounds or something, but I, I don't think. Uh, I would say it's probably related to the coral oh, here. It's just, face? you know, maybe been predated upon, damaged, and then regrown. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll this get looks so different I can't from see the rest a, of the colony. Yeah, yeah I can't see a separate base that would indicate it's growing from some Who other source. Who oh, are yeah. you? Who is that? It's a pretty big fish. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and do a quick zoom on this guy, and then we'll have the bogey. What? What so is that face? This looks like a uh, cusk eel. Oh, look at cusk that. Eel. Oh, they get a different angle on him. Probably Basagigas. Yeah. I think so. Actually, no. I think this might be a Diplocanthopoma. So, uh, what I'm looking at is their the lateral line along the fish. Along the top side, there's like this sort of Z looking formation. That's typical of Diplocanthopoma, mm. which is actually in the family Bifididae and not in an Opidaidae. It's going to hide. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the purpose of those appendages on the bottom? Um, they use them for sensory. So, like, they'll feel along the bottom with them. Mm hmm. Might have to. Yeah, I'll have moving. to go. Oh, wide there, please. Yeah, we might see another one of those around here. They're pretty common. They're one of the bigger fish we'll, we'll spot. I had a question about the sea star uh, that was eating that colony. How long would that take? They take a really long time. They're very slow eaters. Fire. Tire. Wow. Oh. Tire fish. <laughs> yeah. These are uh, a lot of debris on these seamounts. We saw a number of cans last night. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we saw, saw some uh, Let me see a flip Pepsi. Flip-flop. Flip-flop. Chunkla-cops. Chunkla-cops. <laughs> Still going on about that. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> but I just want to make sure that you heard it. <laughs> Chunkla-cops was the fish of the cruise last Last leg. Mm -hmm. We saw one today, actually, Steve. Yeah, I, I did see. a couple. See. Yeah, this one was swimming. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of a steep ridge here. Yeah, steep oh, yeah, rise. Really weird. Yeah, that one looks like a... Something. Maybe it could be a Rodana Ritagorgia. Could be, yeah. We're getting up there. I thought they were much shallower, but last cruise we saw ones that were quite deep mm -hmm. around this depth. Oh, yeah, Steve meant to mention that at the beginning of the dive, within, you know, 3,800 meters, somewhere around there, was a, one of those purple anemones that we sampled on last cruise and we also got in the Line Islands. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that... Um, that has generated some chatter on the Twitter. I was curious because of the depth, is that yep. if that was a depth extension, a range extension. So it, interesting. I'll have to go back and look at some more images, but uh, it it does kind of look like that um, purple serianthid we did sample. Mm. However, some of the, brand, the um, tentacles are much longer, suggesting it could be actually a relicanthus. Um, and so we'll have to look at some of the imagery in more detail to make that differentiation. Hmm. But exact same color. 
I was really impressed when you got that uh, serianthid because mm -hmm. uh, we've tried to sample them before and they just sort of swim away, which was unexpected. Yeah. I was I was going through the Line Islands collections from NA-110 and uh, I didn't see it in there, so I might be imagining this. Maybe it was from NA-114, but it was definitely one of the southerly cruises we did uh, 2019. Go back and double check that. It was probably 114 because I haven't gotten to that cruise yet. 114? I swear I remember handling it though, so maybe... I, I yeah. think I was there. That seems familiar. Uh, I was on one of those ones in the remote Pacific. After 57 cruises, who's counting, right? <laughs> who's, ca who's counting how many mm -hmm. samples you They do? all start to blend together. Yeah, exactly. Too much deep sea footage. yet? Yeah, I saw some uh, earlier this morning. We saw some um, really interesting, a uh, couple of cup corals earlier on the watch uh, in excess of uh, right around 3,000 meters. Hmm. Um, probably Vonella. Uh, is, it has this very wide flare. It's a very short, stubby um, pedestal, but then it flares out. And we've seen it and collected it a bunch of places. So it's really kind of unique cup shape. Um, but, you know, of course, you never know until you get the specimen back to the lab. Yeah. Uh, Those a lot cup of corals are really hard to ID uh, just from video. I had a question about what that fish we just saw eats. Um, they probably eat small crustaceans and other uh, small fish. How many still cam photos are we up to? 1,700. How are we doing on our rock collecting schedule? Have we been, oh, thank you. Yeah, it's just one left. We're at killing the summit. it. Yep. Great. Well, these um, whenever these get annotated, they'll provide a lot of good records for the deep sea coral database because that's hundreds and hundreds of colonies, maybe thousands on this dive we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's going to take a long time. It's going to be a task for whoever does that. <laughs> yeah, so what's the, what's the time like? Uh, so we get a cruise finished, you obtain the data, I mean, and then it's annotated and then it's archived and available. What, what's the time frame for that? A couple, a few years or months? Um, yeah, so it might take us uh, a year or two to get to this cruise, um, mm -hmm. just because we have other cruises that are in line. So the next one that we will be annotated in my lab is uh, NA-114. Nice. So um, once we get that... Apologies for any jokes I've made on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Same so jobs. once we get that started, uh, <laughs> it should take us a few months to, to get through actually annotating the data. Then we'll do a QA, QC, and then send um, all that data off to the Deep Sea Coral database to be uploaded. So depending on how long the cruise is, how many hours, it usually takes four to eight times the uh, length of the dive to complete annotations for it. Wow. And that depends on how dense the dive is. So earlier this morning, when it was a little bit sparser, uh, that, that's going to be about four times, uh, just because we have to stop the video, make our notes, and then continue on. But something like this, where it's really dense, uh, it can take much, much longer, because we have so much variety 
for trying to count each one of the different types of corals that we're seeing and sponges that we're seeing, and then any associates that are on those animals. Mm. We want to mm. uh, count those as well. Oh, you also go for the associates. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are interested in uh, coral associates, so we want to make sure we do obtain those records. And we're making notes about the substrate and, um, you know, animals of interest. So if we make a really good zoom on, say, that anemone, um, that might be something we want to include in our animal guide uh, for future cruises um, and people who are annotating video as reference. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I was contacted uh, a couple of months ago by a shipmate from earlier this year on a different ship, uh, and she's working at the University of Hawaii annotating video, and uh, heard my voice, uh -huh. and, and sent an email to me. Said, "Hey, I just heard your voice online." <laughs> oh yeah, Tiffany. Tiffany. Yeah. Yeah, she works in uh, my lab as well, so uh, I, I we've thought, been working together. I thought you might. Know her, yeah. She's great. And yeah, she's currently out on a cruise. Uh, down the CCZ, doing some midwater sure work. Which she's all about. She's all about the jellyfish. Yep, she's really into stuff. all those jellies, yep. and I've been learning a lot about jellies from her. She knows her stuff. Viewer would like to know if the ROVs are equipped with some kind of a macro camera. I mean, like for super zooms? For, yeah, like really small things. Mm. I think we, well, when we sit up right close to something, we can get a nice zoom on the main HD camera. But And the digital stills we can operate, but I don't know yeah. if that yeah. we, we leave would it do any a, better. Yeah. So on uh, an autofocus setting, so it just snaps a still every 30 seconds, but it does have zoom capabilities. If you do want to follow up about that deep sea coral portal, you can go to deepseacoraldata.noaa.gov, and you can actually interact with the portal. It's got a really nice map uh, mapper tool where you can see, uh, click on individual coral observations that, that have been annotated, as well as pull up photos of those annotations. Um, it's a great database. It pulls from a lot of different sources, both from uh, stuff that's hosted by the deep sea coral program, but as well as uh, museum collections, for example, of deep sea corals and sponges. Uh, so it pulls from a lot of different biogeographic databases as well. It's a, a component of the OBIS um, biogeographic database, which is uh, one of the largest resources in the world for doing biogeographic analyses. Is Tom Horrigan associated with this? Yeah, he's the uh, chief scientist That's of the, the deep sea coral program. Thought it sounded familiar. Yep. Kind of seeing a, di a lot of different local ridges among the general slope and the bathymetry so and we're also seeing that argus doesn't want to play nice there must be some current or just isn't dragging the right way so we'll be up and down these ridges as we try to kind of keep at the at the top of them can we take a look at this at the whips there? Yeah, I want to look at some of these like really thin whips. Sure thing. You see that flash there? Yeah, that yeah. was from the bubble again. Bubble. Yeah, I know about it. Okay. I have a potential fix, but... Uh, Roger. It's speculative. I've been seeing a few of these, and uh, I was curious to see if this was actually a primnoid and not a bamboo Go ahead and push on coral. Bit, please. Like a single stalk yeah. primnoid? Exactly. 
Yeah, so we do see uh, unbranched from noads as well as unbranched bamboos. Hmm. And yeah, and this one definitely looks like an unbranched okay. from noad coral. So that's good to note just because uh, while you're annotating a video like this, you want to be able to say that there are two different types of corals that are whip corals here. Mm. You don't want to make the assumption that they're all the same when clearly they are not. <laughs> yeah. So oh. this one is Candidella gigantea. I wish I could unlearn this piece of information. I thought I was doing pretty good there with <laughs> <laughs> Once you start to go down the rabbit hole, it just uh, Steve going and going. Yeah, it just keeps getting more and more complicated. Just gonna have to go back for a coral PhD. <laughs> <laughs> Complete departure. <laughs> um. Come attend my class. Yeah. In the lounge. Happy to do it anytime. All right. Do uh, sign me up for a semester. Boot, boot camp <laughs> part B. Yeah. Full oh, ride, please. Can you do that on the transit back? Yep. Right when you're busy with mm -hmm. wrapping up the cruise. Oh yeah. Of course. <laughs> I'll pencil you in. <laughs> I want to hear about those intertentacular sclerites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have Thanks. you have you designated a watch name for this uh, team yet? <clears throat> Not yet. Not yet. No. I'm not very fair to Adam if we do it when Steve's in their van, though. You know what I mean? Steve wants the glory. He can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no. I just uh, want to see where you're going, so I can. Here, my watch in the opposite direction. That is a wow. little harsh there. There's nothing like a good Steve burn. <laughs> <laughs> the last cruise we had settled on heavily altered microbes. Some, the, 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 back row, the back row settled on <laughs> ham. Yeah. We were more of a duty and leisure. Duty and leisure. Duty yeah, and right. leisure, yep. Nice. Nice rock formations there. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah, you can see an Argus. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, it's wow. Very cool. Yeah. Linear. Just kind of sticking right up. Yeah. What do you think about that polyopagon? Oh, yeah. It could oh. be a polyopagon. It could be a uh, hyalinema. Oh, there's a dangling sample there now. It's definitely a ferrinum method. I'm looking for big a big osculum at the top, so an opening at the top of that sponge down there. That looks like hyalonema, corinonema. Enormous. Yeah. Bamboos. Looks like there might be more there. Could be something oh, else. Oh, yeah. That's a good sponge to check out. That might actually be on uh, the Chris Wish list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a perfect non precarious place to sample it. <laughs> it's like oh, another you know flying grab. <laughs> yeah. They never make it. Easy. Yes, there, let's state. sample this. Are you going to stop the ship there? Do you want to sample? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. It'll be a slurp, I think. Slurp. Yeah. A little yeah, vacuum. It's very soft, so it should slurp up just fine. Um, See, it looks like I could back it something up. Something like that. I think yeah. it'll be all right. You want to back it's it very up? Very amorphous. Bump for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which way was I going? Two five zero. Uh, yeah, or two, yeah, mm -hmm. two five zero. So six zero, five, six. six five, something like that. Yeah. Bridge now. Uh, let's step back. Two, right, two right, zero meters stay. bearing zero six five. Thank you. I'll keep an eye on it as you guys do this. Roger. Did you have a name on this? I, I missed it. Um, it might be a euplectelid. Euplectelid. But I, I definitely don't have a genus for this. Uh, it could be a rosellid, or it could be something else. I really don't know. That's why we're sampling it. Mm. 
We have similar photos in our animal guide that have question marks on them as well, and they are on our wish list of items that we wish to collect. I'm watching the sub bottom too. Roger. Kiraini? Ooh, it looks like there's two different friends. Do you want to go for the top one? Um, They are the same, so whichever one's easiest for you. Roger that. We're going to have to set up the slurp camera. Oh, yes. Thank you, Rennie. Yep. Rennie's on his game. Now let's do a really quick flush here. And what slurp chamber are you going for here? Uh, the only ones that are full are one and two. Okay. Any of the others? Roger that. We get a flash of our friends here. One, two, boom. <laughs> there goes three. All right. Jake, I'm going to start the suction and then uh, right. fly you up. Do your merry mating. Do the light 50% perhaps. All right. Go ahead and stick the arm out a bit there. Yeah. Got any more arm sticking outage? I'll make sure I don't pull the hose too far. That's okay. I think it'll go. Try that there. Nice. Give it a shake. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Cotton candy. Cotton Perfect. candy. Is that enough for you guys? Uh, that should be enough. Okay. Yeah, it comes through. I think it should be enough as well. All right. Sure. I'm gonna. All right, All right it's in there. In. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's a big beautiful. piece. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. You wanna see? Is there any more? I'll try all of it. Probably. I can do a little yeah. more suction if you want. Yeah, when that second piece came in, I was probably it. Yeah, this is... All right, let's get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. What was the sample number? 016. 016. Oh, uh, that was a big brand there. The rare pelagic optic yeah. coral. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry about that one. Yeah, those ones are really big. They look a bit different. Oh, and then there's that... Uh, Really bushy, Christogorgia. Yeah, I'd like to take a look at that. Sorry to stick around this very precarious, extremely dangerous part. <laughs> That's where or all do you the gotta, good stuff is. You gotta go? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, a little bit. Wait, I'm back in, uh, Argus might back up a little bit, but. Yeah, we can. Uh, we can pause here at the top and wait to see if Argus comes back as long as we just pull up on that winch a bit. You pluck Telid, that's a total guess on the spelling. <laughs> Yeah, we're coming back anyway, and we'll see where we settle out. And if it's in a good spot, we can check this stuff out here. It looks like we have some of those like really thin, um, branching s looking ones. Is that what these sort of more leggy ones yeah, are? Yeah, the sparse branching bamboos. Yeah, possibly. Um, all right, Steve, what you want to look at? Around the left side, so kind of pirouette to the left. Branch. And there should be a very, very bushy uh, golden coral that kind of looks has, like it has very, very small polyps tucked on the bottom side, bottom edge of this. There you go. So right around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock now. Oh, yeah, right there. I, right, oh, I have, uh, yeah. I have a very expensive tool right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, you want to look down on me, please? I'm probably all the way down. Okay, you want to spin your heading around then, please? Yeah. yeah I've always been curious about these. You know, whether they're more closely related to the Chrysogorgia or the Erudogorgia. Mm -hmm. They kind of look like a, a little bit of both. Yeah. Yeah, the little 
A rid of gorgeous spirals. All right, Dave. Just the person I was hoping in. would chime in. <laughs> uh, Les Watling at UH, who has done work on Eritagorgia. Wow. Um, we may want to set up and take a sample here. I think we'll be okay for that. Yeah. <coughs> Quick, you're going to get that arm back out there. Okay. Back to arm exercise today. Yeah, why don't we get set up to do a, a snip? Um, S snip and a slurp? Now, Les yeah. is saying this is a Rodana Eritagorgia. That would be it's gonna come a little wider, please, Dave. Um, That's how are we doing there. on box, box space, though? We could jar it. Oh yeah, we're we fine with. Probably slurp. put it in with the the soliniferous coral yeah. sponge we sample. We can put it in. Or would be. Okay. Yeah, yeah let's do that. You guys don't want to slurp this one? No. Yeah. Let's grab a a chunk of it. Um, okay. Kind of. Yeah. You know, see. You see how it has all of these wispy, whirly bits. Uh, maybe, you know, one of these branches like that or like that. How about we this. go off to the, yeah, off to the left there. Sure. All right. I think that's the way to do and it. And bonus points if you can get any associates, too. Oh. oh. So. All right. Challenges. I'm going to keep my brow looking up a little there, Jake. Okay. Easy mode, hard mode. <laughs> it's, yeah, these these prominences really seem to be have a lot of you know productivity and diversity yeah so we, go for we do have some time. confirmation from uh, les watling at uh who was uh, said this is a new species of rodana ritagorgia that's currently being described and any material would go to support that effort oh awesome I think a clip of something like this was collected during an ex Okeanos expedition during the capstone mission. Looks familiar, yeah. Dave, you want to push on in there a little bit, please? That's great. Jake, I'm going to get you a little more to the side here. Good. Oh. <laughs> Are you too far out there? What I drive you in. I'll drive in a little bit for you. Oh, nice. I think I'm in there. Uh, how much science is? That, that's good. You, okay. Yep, you can grab that. Nice. Lovely. Very nice. All right, full wide there, please, Dave. I'm gonna go sit down on the top of the rock so it doesn't float away. I'm just really impressed with how large this coral is because most of the other Chrysogorges are relatively small in comparison. Sarah, I'm just gonna add this to the same geographic location as the other one because it's right next to it. But I will do a new sample ID, 017. And what was the name of this one? Rodana Rodana Ritagorgia. Rodana Ritagorgia. So that's R H O D A N I R I D O G O R G I A. Nice. Nice. That's how I. That was what I guessed. I don't think I got the the euplectelid right. E U P L E C T E L I D. Um. There's two L's. Ah, two L's. The silent two L's. Uh, where is this going to go? Starboard? Uh, no, it's going forward B. Reg. The other two. Forward, Reg. Two L's with the lid? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That looks right. Let's so go. E U P L E C T E L L I D A. Reg that. There's not really a good place to sit down here, Jake, so I'll just... That, um, right. that sponge bit with the soliniferin is pretty dense, right? Actually, how about this? No risk of it floating out. Starting to get in a tug zone. Yeah. You want to come down a little there on your delta? Sure. I'm just going to... Might be a little floaty. Bye. 
Yeah, Reg, so we should definitely sit down then. Too loud now. Oh, oh. That that works. Works. Our bivalve friend still in there? Little yeah, bump. it is. Yeah, it's in the, right, um, in the corner there. Do we want to put it with the uh, other limpet and yep. sponge? Yeah. Okay. It's right hand size there, Jake. Yep. Much liable. Yeah, go ahead and rotate it 180 from that. There you go. Great. All right. Let's do it. Awesome. Nice. Nicely done. Good job. We'll just have to note that for the f if we put this final summit rock or whatever we put on the other side, we got floaty. Yep. Yeah, the other ones have Ch some room in them too on starboard. Okay. All right, are we ready to continue to proceed up here? Or do we want to check this ridge out more? Uh, I think we're pretty good. Uh, is there a chance of going back and re-imaging the base of that Chrysogorgia, or are we too far? I, th I think we're still in yeah, position. we can go back and look at it again. Okay. We just want to take a look at the base to get an idea of how it's attached to the rock. Roger that. Our viewers ask if we're all members of Megan's fan club. I mean, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know I had a fan club. Apparently you do. Oh, cool. <laughs> it just started. Awesome. <laughs> well, I was on True Facts. That was pretty neat. Very cool. Jake, you want to look a little bit down on that camera there, please?
There's a question going back to the sponge that had the associated coral, the octocoral. And uh, one of our viewers says it looks almost like it was trying not to hinder the sponge from filtering because it was just on the edge. Is that possible or is that something that, or is that just a coincidence? Um, so that sponge um, that that coral was living on was actually dead. Okay. Uh, so the solar versus octocoral was actually just growing along the edge because that was probably okay, the okay, most advantageous place for it to be to, to collect the food that it wants so from being like there. dead once it became established it was already dead yeah Great, yeah so you. it probably settled on that sponge after the the sponge had died and you could tell that it was a dead sponge like when we collected it there was a bunch of sediment that came out uh -huh. uh, that happens to sponges after they've died uh, the water still keeps flowing through the sponge skeleton but instead of the animal actually being able to remove those particulates it just gets trapped inside that dead skeleton and so you see that it was full of sediment steve it looks like the hold fast is right kind of yeah right in the middle in the yeah. middle yeah can you give us a good of a zoom as you can i'll do an image through the colony yeah sure thing and then we'll be good to Go move ahead, on Dave. it's pretty wide base yeah yeah, it's kind of occluded there, but... So if we can center it up a little bit, Jess, and then... I Probably about as thick as a, focus a Sharpie something. marker or something. Raj, I just can't go too too high, or yeah. else I'm going to run into more corals. Okay. You can try that. Uh, of course, it's the thickest part. <laughs> okay, focus on the back. I'm going a little wide there. I'm going to try to get you a better shot. Great. I'm spotting a number of shrimp in the branches. And I saw an anemone, so this coral definitely has associates. Do those shrimp have that color because of their diet? I think it, they're that color because red's a good color to be All right, in the I think we can move on. dark ocean. Okay, uh, sorry about that, yeah. Uh, Just need great. to push got, it out of the way with a manip, you know what I mean? We got what we needed. Sure. <clears throat> I see what Steve's doing here. He's sabotaging the amount of distance we're going to cover so he can <laughs> have the most. Ah, oh, how cruel. Uh, but you've got the most animals, so I think you're a winner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go 250 again. We'll do 100 meters. 250, Raj. Bridge nav. One hundred meter step bearing 250. Out of the base on this side, too. Looks like this is the same one, right? This yeah. is the base. Right. Oh, wow. You can see All the right. base better from this side. Go ahead and push on in there, please. Oh. Can't go too much further to the left there. There's a little bit of pink or purple mm. uh, where the, the tissue's covered mm -hmm. the base, but that's, yeah, that's pretty beefy. Yeah, I wasn't expecting the base to be, or the, uh, the branches to be so thick, given yeah. that the Hollow branches are so thin. All right, go wide, please. Get myself out of the branches here. Caught in the briars. Yeah. Sorry, two five zero. They're in two five zero. Awesome. Going back around, Jake. Two five zero. Interesting vantage here, but they're just so. What's the word? 
<laughs> the fingers look a bit curly from this. Definitely a much poorer visibility right here in this layer. Lots of sediment. Yeah. Green snow. So it wouldn't surprise me to see such a high density of corals right here. Corals and sponges. Mm. Remind me to go check that out. Mm. You ready, Jake? Yeah. Sure. Uh. <laughs> Do one of those half checks again, you know, just copy and paste in. <laughs> Giddies are good. Giddies are good. They're done. It's a big swell. Yeah, that was a really big swell. Looks like Argus is starting to swing. Got 30 meters down in the ship move. 70 to go. ROV team, can you answer a question for a viewer? Yeah, we can. I'd like to know what is the deepest ROV dive the team has done and where was it? Today. Today. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Three eight nine eight. May have, yeah. So there's a lot of <clears throat> there's a few things on the vehicles that are only rated to four thousand meters. And did you take some special precautions before the dive? Special precautions? To get ready for that deep dive? Um no. I mean, we, we sat in a circle on the aft deck and <laughs> <coughs> had a minor seance. <laughs> um, it, it actually, I guess there was some special precautions that were taken um, mm. by Tim. 
um, he made us a, a tension readout monitor um, so that we can look at the top tension peaks on our winch. Um, and it will kind of auto refresh every 10 minutes or so. Um, and that gives us kind of a timestamp of what the peak tensions on our winch are. And we didn't have that before today's dive and it's very useful actually. But because we're diving so deep, um, we really have to pay close attention to that tension on the cable now. Um, and we have a sea state out there that's, you know, it was rougher yesterday, I'll say, than, than it is right now, but we still get some swells that will pull down that tension and um, so things to be mindful of. So I guess that would be a big yeah. addition for today's dive. Another thing we do is we add extra oil to our um, hydraulic reservoirs because at depth oil compresses so we lose some of our jam in our uh, hydraulic functions so we kind of in increase the oil at the surface so that when it compresses we don't lose too much at deeper depths pray to the o-ring gods <laughs> <laughs> yep yes that, that as well it's really exciting to watch the launch yeah, it's a, a good one. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of things on the, on either vehicle. A few things on on both vehicles that are rated to six thousand meters, but we do have some things that are only four thousand, and so that's you're kind of only as strong as your weakest link kind of idea. Argus is fully rated to 6,000. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. I think Herx Syntactic is the main thing that's only 4,000. Yeah. But they're... We have... So the beacons, the big ones are 7,000 meter rated, but the small ones are 4,000 meter rated. So we actually have a 4,000 meter one on Hercules right now. We have a couple of extra ROVs on the ship currently. Are there plans for those? Not for this cruise, yeah. Um, but when we we moved from well, we plan on doing a bit of quite a bit of work over the next few years out in the remote Pacific, based in Honolulu. But we have a warehouse space in Los Angeles, so we were taking things with us that we that are easier, much easier to to uh, ship over yourself than ship over at a later date. We have a question from a three-year-old asking, why was the, the base of the stock bright yellow? Did we lose our, no, uh, we got okay, Megan so here, right? Yeah, oh, so the base of that coral that we were looking at? I assume so. Ooh, is that one of the stars that we're looking for? Um, that's a hypasteria. And I um, wonder, it looks like it's on the sponge and not on yeah. a coral. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know what it's doing up there. Confused. Normally it likes to eat coral. Is it uh, eating well, there's, yeah, the encrusting coral. Yeah, maybe it's... Oh, yeah, it could be feeding on that uh, stoloniferous coral that's growing on that sponge. We made a collection of that earlier. Um, to answer that question about the base of the corals being a different color, um, that's because the tissue had receded from that base. So the tissue covering uh, the skeleton was making it appear to be, you know, sort of a, a pinkish, orangish color, but it had receded from the base and that's why that color was different. Ooh, let's take a look at this lemon yellow. It's beautiful. I stepped away. Is this, is this <laughs> have we seen this? Yet? No, this is a yeah. first for this dive. Oh my gosh, that is cool. This is much less fan like and kind of branches in different different uh, radial directions, it seems like. Yeah, so this yeah. is a Corrado Isididae um, S1 clade. S1. Mm. Oh, we got our S1s a good back. Good S1. Yep. Yeah. So is the yellow the part down below doesn't look it like it has as many shot. polyps on it. Oh, down down here? Yeah, like up near the top it looks and less I can yellow. Tilt up the HD oh, I think oh, okay. it's just because the branches are thinner and oh, okay. it's catching the light. 
but they're all the, the whole thing is that highlighter yellow. <laughs> you want to zoom in on? Yeah, let's take a, a close look at the branching pattern and get some nice view of the polyps here. Everybody loves zooms. <laughs> I love zooms. It's a lot of color right there. Yeah. And just bias to the right there. Then we have this these ophiocanthid uh, brittle stars hanging out. Ooh. Ooh. They out. seem to abandon ship when they uh, <laughs> feel us coming. Yeah. You'll see them drop off coral before we even approach sometimes. So I, th I think they can actually feel the vibrations from the ROV and they just are like, nope, not doing this, and they run <laughs> away. So is the clade at all related to the color or is it the branching pattern or, some, or um, something else? So we identify this one uh, a little bit by the color and also by the branching pa pattern. Yeah. What's your porch you're backing up? So the S1 clade is an internodal brancher. So you can see here um, it's branching in between those black bands. Mm -hmm. Those are the nodes. All right, we're gonna have to yeah. start to boogie. Gotta scram. Scram, Sam. <laughs> what, Dave? Thanks. It's like that one's trying to let See go, but that one know. arm just isn't <laughs> into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one arm, hang it on. And are those predators on the coral? Uh, I don't believe they are. I, I think they're just up there to try to feed. Les Watling suggests it could be an echnomysis. Good yeah, to me. some of the ectomyces are that a uh, yellow color. They're usually not that yellow. Mm. Um, nice. Most of the S ones are that really, really bright yellow and have the thinner branching. Mm -hmm. And Jake, I'm gonna stay. But on you that never know. There, so uh, you can come up. A I'm always bit surprised the by oh, new yeah. taxonomy, especially with these bamboo corals. Mm -hmm. So Scott France says that yeah, this is a little bit more typical of the S one that colony that we were just looking at. Could we zoom on some of these sparse branchers? Sure, I'll get a quick. Yeah, 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 just a quick zoom. All right, Dave, wanna go in there? All right, yeah, so this one looks like an Acanella weberi. You can see where it's branching apart at least three times near the base. Mm. So we saw a bunch of these earlier in the dive when we were deeper. All right. Thanks. Yeah, that looks good. <laughs> Full wide there. Stay out ahead. A soft coral, that red bit. Yep, yep, you mm. got it. Looks like a mushroom coral, that, yeah. Sananthomastis, that's correct. Could we take a look at this little sponge? Yep. Sure thing. So I think this might be a uh, Hylonema corinonema, the type of glass sponge that has a really interesting um, base. So it has these spicules that stick out from the bottom and help like root itself 
into the place where it's living. Zoom in there, Dave. Nice. And this one looks to have two osculums. It's like one here and one here. So those <laughs> are the openings. Nice. I see. I like that. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Telestrator action. <laughs> I'm really getting into this Telestrator thing. Great. <laughs> Valuable tool. Okay. Awesome, yeah. Pick up. Keep going. All right, so that ship move is complete. Raj. Uh, Argus still has probably another 15 or so meters to go. Uh, Adam, would you like me to call another one in or, or uh, explore around here? No, I think we can keep moving to waypoint sure. nine. Sure thing. Still go 250. 250, two Raj. Bridge nav. Uh, one more step, one hundred meters, bearing two five zero. Thank you, Megan. When you, uh, if you explored around a seamount along a contour, would you find that one side has higher concentration of of corals and sponges than another because of the kind of direction of flow? Yeah, I definitely think we would see a difference between one side of the seamount and another, um, especially because current is a, is a big factor in where these animals are growing. Mm -hmm. So um, especially in the Hawaiian Islands, we're finding that, you know, the, uh, the windward side of these islands or, or seamounts tend to have higher densities than you know these leeward areas which tend to be more sedimented mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah because we've seen different areas that are have higher concentrations but it doesn't seem to be uh, kind of depth related i mean some of it is depth related but it isn't progressing in one direction because mm -hmm. we've seen uh, you know areas a little bit shallower that were much denser than this um, but i, I think it seems it has a lot to do with where they are positioned relative to the current. Exactly. And then we tend to target areas uh, along ridges and ridge lines because those are areas where deep sea corals are known to be found in high densities mm -hmm. because those are areas of current acceleration. So for this dive, we're actually going up what looks to be like a little bit of a ridge arm on the seamount. Um, we like to target those areas as opposed to areas that look like valleys mm -hmm. um, for a couple reasons. One, for safety of our vehicle. If we're between two ridges, um, you don't really have an escape strategy uh, if we get strong currents pushing the ROV. Uh, and then two is most of the time it's just sediment down there, um, maybe some, you know, talus fields, so a bunch of little rocks and boulders and you're not seeing as exciting biology. But you do have the rocks and boulders and uh, <laughs> you know, you don't wanna you don't wanna sniff at those. No, no. I mean sometimes it's really hard to find a good rock to pick up. Sure. And uh, some people have gotten burned in the past where they think they'll they'll see good rocks later on in the dive and then everything is you know, <laughs> cemented in and <laughs> That's really unfortunate, especially if you're looking forward to a rock sample. Here's a question. Have, has anyone done surveys in that, des in that design, belt transects rather than ridge transects? Yes, yes. There are people who have been doing transects along uh, depth contours, which can be very informative. Um, some of the work that I did for my master's thesis, uh, it was on a depth contour. So we ran transects along 
one depth in order to see the community at that depth and then moved up to a different depth for comparison. 